Yes, life was delayed, but it never gave the nine. Hello, 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 everybody. It's Annika Laquet here, and you're listening to Never Gave the Nine Podcast. If you are new here, make sure that you listen to the previous week's episode and hit the subscribe button. I would like to give a shout out to Yasha. She was the very first person to comment on last week's episode. Thank you, girl, for doing that. If you would like a shout out, be the very first person to comment on this episode, and I will give you a shout out on next week's episode. Before I get started, I would like to say rest in peace to Councilman Eric Mays. He was Flint, Michigan's councilman. I know him from TikTok about his boisterous and tell like it is attitude and he has given me life every time i go on tiktok okay and he does not care about what people say about him he said you are out of order okay so i want to give my condolences to councilman eric Mays's family so y'all let me get my water because <laughs> y'all about to get into my business yeah Hmm. All right. Because we about to keep it real, okay? This is about keeping it real, right? Last week was a doozy for me. Probably a doozy for a lot of people on social media last week. If you do not know what I'm talking about, the Risa Tisa story. All right? Of who the F did she marry, right? Y'all, that story resonated with me personally not because of the pathological liar part but what she has been through you get what i'm saying so if you do not know risa tisa she went completely viral on tiktok and it has gone viral on all social media platforms she had a 52 part video i personally did not watch all the videos i could not sit there and watch 52 parts of it and not because i was bored or i just got tired of listening to it i really could not finish it okay because i got to part 17 and i stopped and at that part i just felt as though i can relate <laughs> i can relate and let me tell y'all how i can relate to this and to her story i call it desperate girl era now if you don't know what a desperate girl era is because i literally made this word up desperate girl era is when you are desperate and you will be with anybody just to say you have a man or you'll be with anybody just to say, I got this marriage, I got these kids, or just to get that love and that affection that you have been missing. I would say every girl has gone through this. And if they say they haven't gone through this, more than likely they're not want to admit it yet, but I'ma speak from my experience. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it with friends. I've seen it with family members. And I'm here to let you all know that Desperate Girl Era is real. Okay, I have went through it. Okay, I have went through it from the time I was like, like 21 to 25 and maybe even 26. If you still do not understand what Desperate Girl Era is, just look up Risa Tisa's story and go through all 52 videos. And she literally said that she was desperate. So I'm here to tell y'all, I could not watch all of it because it made me emotional. I literally told my best friend, I cannot watch all of it. So let me tell y'all a little bit of my story, okay? I have been single for seven years. I will say seven years because April of this year will be seven, right? And I feel that I have experienced all that there need to know about being single, okay? I experienced all phases of singleness that a person can experience, okay? I experienced... The really good, where I'm happy, I don't got to check in with nobody, nobody got to check in with me. I experienced the, okay, I'm like, I'm okay, you know, I would like somebody, but I'm okay at this moment. The bad, where I'm like, baby, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy at all. I'm seeing my friends, I'm seeing my classmates, I'm seeing people who I know getting the man that they want, the man that they pray for. I'm seeing women and men getting together and getting married and having children and having this, this, and that. And I'm like, okay, all right. It's not happening. What's going on? It's getting down to the wire of me being single for a little too long, right? And then I experienced a really ugly where I didn't tell anybody this. I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell my friends. 
no one knew, but now y'all know. And now my mom and my friends gonna be watching this and they're gonna be like, girl, what? I experienced times where, oh Lord, now I'm about to cry. I'm gonna cry. Okay. Woo. I experienced times where I did not wanna come home because I was going home to an empty house where I wasn't coming home to a good man. You see what I'm saying? I'm coming home to my dog. You feel what I'm saying? I'm coming home to just me and my thoughts in my mind, watching TV, chilling, eating, whatever, right? And I just didn't want to come home. I didn't want to get dressed up. I didn't want to watch my figure. I didn't want to eat right, okay? I didn't want to move around. I didn't want to go outside because I was like, what? I'm just getting tired of the inconsistency with men. Like I will literally, you know, be talking to a man or men and they all like, they all act the same way. And I was like, is it me? What do I have going on? Cause I think it's, it's like something's going on. And I was in that mindset of girl, I, I'm just tired of just, you know, putting forth this, this effort of wanting to be in a relationship. And then I experienced the really good again. So being in the desperate girl era literally goes up and down. It's an up and down battle where things are really good and then things are really bad and there's really things that's kind of okay. And then it goes to that phase of, okay, this is my life right now. I'm gonna have to settle with this, right? But then I'm now, me today, I am now at that phase of coping. I'm okay. And I put in my head that I will be okay if I would never experience love again in that manner. I'm okay. And I think that's what God is showing me is that if you do not ever get married, then what? You have to literally just be in your mind and be like, I am okay. Because at first I was not okay. Okay. I was not okay with the fact that I may never get married. I may never experience that love and affection from a good man. And I am okay now. Back then, girl, no, you couldn't tell me that. Uh -uh. The, the, the person I am now and the person I was before, two different people, okay? Because back then, I'm like, what you mean I ain't never going to get married? What you mean I'm never going to find the love of my life? What you mean? But right now, I'm like, it's okay. I finally cope with it. And there's a lot of women that's probably out here right now that's probably just coping with the fact that they may never get married again or may never get married or may never experience that love and affection again. And it's okay. And also, me and my best friend was talking and she was like, it's a sad thing that the society that we live in literally pushes for women to get married before 30. And if you are not married before 30, then you're an old maid then you are undesirable. Then you are not this or you're not that. And, or just say that your life is completely over if you do not get married by the time you're 30. But I'm going ahead of myself because guess what? That's something I'm gonna push close to the end so I can let you all know exactly how I feel about this situation. There's certain parts about being single that does get to you. There's certain parts about being single literally is a good thing. Now, I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of being single and also the pros and cons of being single for years at a time. Okay. So the pros about being single for years at a time is the fact that the point of being single is for you to find yourself. The point of being single is for you to heal all that trauma that you have inside your mind and your body and your spirit, and then come out with a better version of yourself. Okay. That's the best part is the healing journey. And you start to learn a lot about yourself. The next good thing about being single is the fact that you're not trying to deal with somebody who, like I said, a, a pathological liar. You, you don't want to deal with somebody that's lying to you. You don't want to deal with somebody that's cheating on you. You don't want to deal with somebody who is not keeping it completely 100 with you. Okay? And also, you don't have to check in with nobody. You good. You know what I'm saying? It's a good things that you have going on. And also, it's a lot of issues going on here. A lot of diseases. A lot of uh, nasty people in this world, and it's best that you just keep yourself together because, baby, I ain't uh uh, no, no, N O to the no, 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 <laughs> N 
it's a no for me. So that's some good parts of being single. So the bad part, I would say the con about being single is the loneliness sets in. After the loneliness, then comes desperateness. And when that desperateness sits in on your behind, baby, you are liable to date any and everybody just to say that you have somebody. Yes, it go, you go through that ups and down motion. And then it's also sad when dudes want to play in your face. And I would say, even though I have been single for seven years, it has literally taught me a lot about myself. It has taught me that, girl, you thought you was ready for marriage, but you are not ready for marriage. And I literally had to figure out why I wasn't. I know now I know back then I was not ready for marriage. I was not ready to be a wife because I had a lot of healing to do. I had a lot of maturing to do. And now I'm at that place in my life where, okay, I have, I have healed from trauma and I have healed from certain situations and I have matured. So now personally, me, myself, I feel that I am ready to be a wife, but I'm also ready to be that person that my man needs. And he also needs to be the person that I need for him. And I also know what I want. Because back then, <laughs> Big I did not know what she want, okay? I was like, oh, yeah, he fine, he fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but right now, being in my singleness, and also I was dating, so I knew what I liked and what I didn't like. And now I'm at that point where if this person is not on my list of what I like, it's automatic no for me. And I'm going to tell y'all something that my mom has been telling me to post about for years so that people can relate to my story. And I have been battling with her and being like, no, I'm not telling nobody that. <laughs> but I finally want to be able to tell y'all this because this is Never Gay Denied Podcast. And baby, being about the never gave, it never gave scared, okay? It never gave I am about to not keep it real with my people. So I'm going to keep it completely real with y'all. I am saving myself for marriage. And a lot of people do not understand that concept. They respect it. They just don't understand it. Okay. And a lot of people have been asking me, Annika, like, why have you been single for seven years? That was a big indicator. Okay. And the guys I have dated, the guys I have been in a relationship with, they did not like that. And I say, okay, for me, it has been ups and downs about the saving yourself for marriage type thing because I've experienced, I'm going to tell y'all the con to this, but the pro is way bigger, baby. The con to this is the fact that the, that the loneliness kind of sets in because I haven't found anybody that's equally yoked with me. And with that being said, it's a lot of rejection, a lot of rejection, okay? A guy literally told me, like, I think it's stupid that you're doing this, right? <laughs> a guy I was dating, he thought it was, it was stupid for me to save myself from marriage. And he hung up the phone on me, baby. It's all right. It's okay. And that constant mm, feeling, like, mm, that kind of, like, sunken place feeling when I am meeting a new guy and I tell them this and they get that look, they give me that look like, and they have that awkward silence. And then, I don't know, it seemed like something is turning their heads like, hey, can I be with her still, even though we're not gonna do nothing or, right? So, baby, I've experienced it all, okay? I experienced all facets of rejection in this singleness, okay? But at the end of the day, I'm good. I'm finally good, all right? And I feel like there's going to be that one man, not 10, not five, that one man that's going to literally be everything and more that I need from him. He's going to be patient, baby. He's going to be kind. He's going to be that guy, okay? Period. And that's exactly what I am wanting. But I'm not going to be sitting around waiting. I want to be still focusing on me. I'm going to still be getting myself together. And that is the truth about that saving yourself from marriage, okay? And it seemed like a lot of dudes do not get it. And I have, like like I said, when it comes to rejection, it did come with a lot of heartbreak. It did become kind of sad, especially it's like, dang, when is it going to be my turn, right? And every time it's my turn, it don't be my turn. And 
the positive thing about saving myself from marriage and what I've learned throughout these seven years is that God was protecting me through every last desperate girl era. God was protecting me through every last rejection. God, God was there. Okay. God was there for me, baby. He was there for me when I did not know he was there for me. I'd be like, Lord, like, <laughs> I, and then I get to doing that prayer of, if this man is not the one for me, I pray that you remove him out of my life safely, okay? And right then when it happened, God removed that man out of my life. And I'll be like, God, dog, like that was kind of quick. I'm like, why has that happened? And bet you believe it may not be the same day. It may not be a few weeks or a few months from then, but I always find out why me and this dude would never work out or will never even get back together or ever will even talk a day in this lifetime. God literally reveals to me the reasons, baby, the reasons. And I thank God for literally continuing to keep watch over me. Okay. Yes. I was not the girl who always got picked. Yes. I was and I'm not a pick me girl. Cause please don't do that to me, but I was never the type of girl that get picked. Okay. And if I do get into a relationship, it will be years before I get into another one. Okay, so it kind of put that sadness into my mindset, like, dang, this is kind of sad, but also it allowed me to be more mature and how to take rejection in a different way. Okay, and I'm here to tell you all this because I feel like my thoughts has been all over the place because I was kind of slow to doing this episode because I did not want to really express how I was feeling about my singleness, but I feel that this can help someone. And this can motivate somebody to keep going, even when you are sad, even when you are desperate, even when you feel like you see everybody getting their happy ever after. And you are not at the moment. I want to say, keep going. I want to say, keep being prayed up. Okay. Whatever you believe in, baby, big honey, believe in God. So whatever you believe in, pray. Okay. And keep focused on yourself this is all about self-love this is all about self-discovery tap in into that place where you said dang i don't want to be single because i have to deal with my thoughts or i don't want to be single because i have to deal with the loneliness baby in the loneliness comes self-discovery in the loneliness it does not always mean lonely okay sometimes being alone is what you need so you can gather your thoughts together sometimes being in that loneliness mindset or that lonely state means that you have to heal from past trauma. You have to heal from the previous relationship. You do not want to be the type of person to always be in a serial relationship. You ain't had no time to heal in between. It's okay to be single. It's okay. Yes, the loneliness hits you like a ton of bricks. Yes, the desperateness comes in every now and then. But at the end of the day, you get to a point where you can just cope with being single and you can cope with self-love, self-build, and self-worth, okay? So that's a part of pros, baby, because the pros is I see men for who they really are, okay? My judgment is not clouded. I can distinguish whether if this man and me, we are equally yoked, because if you do not believe in what I believe, we cannot be on one accord together. If you do not have that same war and value that I have, we cannot be together, okay? And right then, even though everything that we have going on, every, we could be we could be fully matched together, baby. But if you do not believe in the same thing I believe in, which is abstinence, we can't be together. We can't. So it's best that we both part ways and that's all about strength okay because it's so hard sometimes to be like dang this man is everything i want but <laughs> this man is everything i need but no and you got to stand on those morals and values and basically you got to stand on business when it comes to your self-worth you got to stand on business when it comes to your morals and values not try to hop around the moral value no not hopping around but standing on it and standing in it, okay? It takes a lot of self-strength 
to stand on your morals and values, even when you want to be in a relationship. This is what this solo episode is about. Though I have been single, I'm still pushing through. Though I have been in my loneliness, I'm still going. And that's, it does not really mean lonely. It means I had to do some self-discovery. Even though I've been through my Desperate Girl era, doesn't mean that it's going to last always. So be able to continue to go, continue to strive, continue to dress up. If you that girl that like to dress up, still dress up. And society literally is wrong in this situation because people, like I said earlier, people may say that you are old maid if you do not get married and have any kids by the time you're 30. I think that's a messed up situation. It's really wrong on society's part, especially if you're being asked by family members, friends, like, when are you going to give your parents this kid? When are you going to, when your, when your man coming around? Where's your husband at? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't dwell into that. Being able to say, it's not here yet, it's okay. That's what they need to know. It's in God's timing, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to not stop trying, okay? But God is literally going to pick out the man for you. And let me tell y'all something. Be patient, okay? Be patient. Your man is coming. Another thing, I used to hate when people tell me that. I used to hate it. I used to hate when my best friend told me that. I need your, your man come and be patient. I used to hate when my family members told me that. My other friends tell me that. I need to be patient. Your man is coming. I used to hate that word so much because I was in the Desperate Girl era. It was going in one ear and not the other, okay? Because I hated that. I'm like, another thing. I got to the point where I feel like people in relationships couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> I used to hate that when people give me advice about being patient and waiting for your man to come. I'm like, what are you telling me? Because you're in a relationship. You can't tell me nothing. <laughs> you got what you want. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm over here looking like Boo Boo the Fool over here. Okay. But I got to that point where now I understand. I completely understand. And being in a relationship does not always equate to happiness. <laughs> because sometimes you can go through a desperate girl era in your relationship. I'm glad that God allowed me to stay in my singleness because that just means to me, that I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, but the man that God has for me, he is not ready yet. And Lord, I pray, and you should pray this too, y'all, make sure that the man that God chooses for you is the man that God chooses for you, okay? God will choose the man for you, okay? God will literally, I want the, I want the day, I want it to be clear as day when the man that God chooses for me, I know he chose him for me. I don't want to have no guesses. I don't want to have no concerns. I don't want to have no question. I will automatically feel it in my soul that that man is the one for me. And I want you all to be clear and intentional about who you're dating. I want you to be clear and intentional about your goals, your values, and your dreams when it comes to a good man. I want you all to just be patient within yourself. Find yourself. Understand who you are. And then be able to be ready when God gives you that man, okay? Tune in to next week's episode to talk to Monica Chandler Price, a life insurance and final expense specialist. I want to thank you all for listening to my solo episode. It's going to be back to regular schedule, bringing in a new guest, okay? Have y'all liked the guest? Do y'all like what I have been showing y'all so far? Make sure y'all comment below. So y'all, before I go... This is the last week of Black History Month. I've been asking all of my supporters this question. I've asked all of my guests this question. Now I'm going to answer this question. Black History Month means success, Black excellence, sophistication, resilience, trials and tribulations that every last Black person has experienced in this lifetime, in the last lifetime, in the last lifetime before that, Every last one of us have experienced something in our lives, but yet we stay resilient. We push through. We bounce back. We are making our own tables, okay? We are sitting at our own tables that we have created for ourselves and we're bringing people with us. 
we are so powerful our black beautiful skin all different shapes every last one of us as black people we are beautiful and wonderfully made okay the sun shines on our skin y'all we are educated we are all of that okay and black history means that we are never giving up on our dreams we are never giving up on ourselves and we're going to keep pushing through no matter what the circumstances is we are the culture and that's what black history month mean to me <laughs> and remember yes life was delayed but it never gave an ad i'm your host annika laquette and you're listening to never gave an ad podcast bye